All right, this is round number six against Slowplow. I could go full Madman and play Rubble Stolen Elemental to get in for ten, or I could just, you know play Warhound Raider. <laughs> we'll just play Warhound Raider. Hopefully draw. You know, I don't actually even know. Living Hive's one of my favorite cards. I think I really like this card. It's super fun to play with. Unlike Stingy Invocation, uh, the other Killer V card that's good. Uh, Hive Embers is actually pretty fun too. Because uh, any card that's interactable poison is pretty fun. Stinging Invocation just makes a bunch of bees randomly. Sap my creature, okay. <laughs> that's fine. I wonder what he's doing. Hammer Fang? Okay, I can't even block that with a Living Hive, which kind of sucks. So what I'll do is play Umber Ice Crusher and the... If he's playing a Loyan, he's probably got formation stuff. So I want to play it here because... Ordnance Captain is a, a formation card. And then I'll play Living Hive in this side lane. <clears throat> this way, if he has an Ordnance Captain, or that's like the only one that I care about. He could he can't he can kill my uh my creature, but I get to kill it as well. Plus, if, in order to form mate, he'd have to put something in for a living hive, which he probably doesn't want to do. <clears throat> so I get to play Guitar Sprite in front of Hammer Fang, and then see where it moves. I think the Sap, I get to block 5 damage from it. I don't know why he didn't put Hammer Fang somewhere else. <laughs> Just attack me for 5. He already dealt with this creature with Sap. Okay, so that stops my Avalanche, or Avalanche Guardian stops my... Gracious, this card's not good. But it does stop the Living Hive, kind of? Sort of. <laughs> Let's see what he uh, leveled with it. Uh, I don't know yet. I'll check during my or during his turn. So I can always like move it with uh, my eight two as well. So let's play Katari Sprite. Hmm. I guess I want to play Shimmerfang Serpent Grove Matrix actually. And if I get a really lucky placement on this Hammerfang, I I want to play the Shimmerfang first. That way I have a chance to move it in front of the Shimmer Fang. Yep, okay, there we go. So that just kills my Hammer Fang. I can Blizzard Shaman my Living Hive out of the way, and then play probably Grub Matriarch, maybe Ash Maiden, if he doesn't want to block any of my creatures. Like, Ash Maiden in front of his 1-9 is pretty good, because he can't deal with the Ash Maiden unless he wants to replace his 1-9. Which means I'm basically guaranteed a card there. Let's see what he leveled with the Steel Spark. So he leveled a Volcano Giant. Probably would have been better off just playing Volcano Giant. <laughs> so that's probably he's meta transferring probably the Shimmerfang Serpent. Yeah, okay, no big, no big deal there. And then Justicar, which stops my Living Hive, so I don't even really want to bother Blizzard Shamaning it. Blizzard Shamaning it now, but Blizzard Shamaning the uh, the Grove Major is going to be pretty good. Maybe I play. I'm at least playing Grove Matriarch and Blizzard Shaman. Maybe I play Ashbane if I move this out of the way. We'll see. No, so I moved the Living Hive. It doesn't really, so it doesn't really matter. I'll just play Grove Matriarch in an open lane and then go to combat. Or attack this, I guess. Sure. <laughs> now my 8 2 can kill it without any extra assistance. Because I'm probably I might dendrify my, my my living hive to level up dendrify and make a seven seven out of this zero eight. Zero eight that can't make any bees is not very good. Though I guess he can't control where hammer fang goes. We'll see, we'll see. Uh the good cards in my hand are definitely I definitely want to play Shimmer Fang Serpent and maybe Blizzard Shaman or Dendrify. Not Heartseeker and not Hunter. Well, maybe Hunter. Hunter's what, a 5-9? A 5-8? Or 6-8 even. Yeah, 6-8, because I'd have four creatures in play. Okay, so yeah, I'll just play... Hmm. Trying to figure out what the best play is. Because this trades... I can play Shimmerfang Serpent here, and then I can either play Hearth... Hunter here or Dendrify here. I think Dendrify's better because he's going for this wall thing with the Cinder Colossus. I think it's a little better to uh, 
Uh, let's just play it on my seedling. Seedling does less than uh, Living Hive. Though I guess if I draw Cultivate, yeah, okay. <laughs> if I draw Cultivate, I can put it on this one. This seedling to make a 9-9. Nine -nine. He's got a level 2 Sap, so he could Sap my Shimmer Fang Serpent or my, my Tree Folk. I don't really care which. Sap is not a very good card. Uh, so that kills my Hammer, or that kills my Blizzard Shaman. And then I can play Gorb Matrix in front of it to make it move somewhere else. If it moves in front of the seed, like I'm probably not going to cultivate it. If it moves in front of anything, so he's meta transferring again. Meta transfer my snake. Meta transfer my tree folk. Meta transferring my tree folk would probably be better since uh, actually it's not true. Maybe yeah okay. So he meta transfers the tree folk. So what I can do is actually this makes it just a nine nine. Do I want to kill hammer thing? Probably. So let's play Grove Matriarch in front of Hammerfang. Let's see where Hammerfang moves. So move there. Uh, I could cultivate to make a creature to block Hammerfang. But then it, it would move again. So I'll just cultivate this guy. And then pass the turn. I didn't even think about uh, cultivate replacing your creature so that Hammerfang moves again. Uh, now I could Shatterbolt Hammerfang to kill it, or I could just play two level 2 creatures and not really worry about Hammerfang, because uh, the rest of his deck's not really doing anything. Like He's got a bunch of saps, a bunch of meta transfers. What if he leveled meta transfer? Oh, he leveled a Spark Frandisir. <laughs> Another pretty bad card. Is he going to have anything to block? So this debuffs my Shimmerfang Serpent. So I'll just play the Blizzard Shaman and move one of my creatures in front of the Hammerfang to kill the Hammerfang. Okay, so that kills the Hammerfang, and then I can play Warhound Raider post combat to dodge the. Uh, it doesn't even matter. I don't want to play. Her. I'm playing around Chaos Twister this time, so I didn't play my Warhound Raider in the center lane. Finally. So I'm going to play Living Hive just so I have a 10-15. Probably over the current Living Hive I have. Even though Square has done nothing, he's just been overly concerned about it, I would say. And I think a level 3 Living Hive does way more than a level 3 over Geist Crusher. Especially in regards to him having Hammer Fangs in play. Okay, so this, this card just suicides. Both of them do. He continues blocking. Uh, what I'm going to do is play... I'll just play a Living Hive over my current Living Hive, and then play a Matriarch over this to kill his 8-4. He can sap it, which I think is one of the only cards he has that does anything, that, that stops my creature from killing us. Uh, which is a reason not to play it there, but I don't really care if he plays sap, because if he plays sap, he's not playing a creature. If he doesn't play creatures, he can't kill me. I want to level this Dendrify. Oh, I guess it's already level 2, so I don't even care now. I wish it. I, oops. Whoops. Let me fix that for y'all. Okay, I'm reloading after I accidentally destroyed the client. So <laughs> uh, it doesn't actually show the game log, which is super frustrating when you reconnect to a game. So it looks like he played Cloud Cleaver Titan and Steel Spark Tinkerer, and I have no idea what he leveled off this Tinkerer. So what I'm going to do is play, I guess, just Shimmer Fang Serpent and Grove Matriarch. Yeah, those, those cards are decent threats. Just play this in the, the aggressive lane, because I don't care about this 13-4 this right now. I can throw my own Cinder Colossus in front of it. I can just like play Warhound Cursor in front of it, hit hit it for two, then play Cinder Colossus, then play... I don't know. Figure something out. I wish I had a, uh, a card to wake up my... Because there's level 3... Level 3 Cinder Colossus. Okay, I don't know why he's so scared of Living Hive if he's uh, got a Justicar. But anyway, we'll just play Warhound Raider and attack. Put Cinder Colossus in front of it, and then play uh, Ronti Elementalist to move the Shimmerfang Serpent in front of his. 
Justicar. Because I don't think he has a level 3 sap. I think I would have remembered that. Though I guess he could have one if he leveled with the Steel Scar Tinkerer. Killing his creatures I think is a lot better than dealing a bunch of damage to him. Uh, he can't ignore the level 3 living head because it's a 10, a 10 15. 10 15 trampler. And that's what I've got in my deck, right? I've got the Grove Matriarch, the 10 15, and the Blue Shaman. Those are, my, those are my level 3s, along with the two I've already played. So this moves his guy out of the way. Uh, I can block it with a Warhound Raider, but I'm probably just going to block him with Grove Matriarch twice, and then hopefully draw another level 3 to deal with it next time. Battletech Inventors to shrink. Uh, okay, the snake. So now I can only poison it once. The reason I'm not blocking it with Warhound Raider is because I think I can play Warhound Raider in empty lane and force him to block, and that'll be a lot better. Uh, whereas this buys me a turn, and levels a pretty good card. Though I guess I'm not really doing anything with the uh, Ascender Colossus right now. Okay, so my Shimmerfang Serpent dies, so does his creature though. Then I draw Living Hive, which is a really strong answer to Orient Justice card. Well, Grove made sure it kills it too. I assume he has the, the 7 too, that wakes up his creatures. So he just goes straight to combat. Doesn't have the 7 too, apparently. Because he would have definitely played it over the Elementalist <laughs> to uh, wake up his Colossus. This is 24 damage to me. Definitely want to wake that thing up if you can. Uh, so now I block this, and this just gets eaten. I guess he cares more about the Volcano Giant than he does this guy Nightlighter. Uh, he has meta transfer, so this Living Hive isn't like guaranteed to kill his Volcano Giant, but it comes pretty close. I could have put it in front of the Steel Spark Tinkerer, but I still have some Blizzard Chomps in my deck to move the level 2 version around. Hmm. I can throw Cinder Colossus in front of his Cinder Colossus to play around the 7-2. The, the Flame, flame something instigator. Maybe it's not. I, it's something instigator. I know it's an instigator. <laughs> it's a 7 2. Okay, so he has a level 3 meta transfer, which I believe is minus 7 attack, maybe minus 9 attack. Uh, which, you know, eliminates my living hive from viability, but it does still make bees. Bees would also kill a center colossus. He has to block these creatures too. I think my level 3 is a lot better than his level 3. <laughs> Grub Matriarch is just such a solid level 3 card. So there's Ordnance Captain to just chop block. And then what else has he got for me? If I'm lucky, he doesn't have a just a card. I guess he can't have just a card until his next turn. Okay, so he just blocks the B with his, uh, his Volcano Giant. Volcano Giant actually dies because of that. So what I'm going to do is play Cinder Colossus in front of this Cinder Colossus. Uh, just to level it, give me my own level 3 Colossus. I could play Twin Strength, but I don't think that's really important. As preventing me from taking 24 damage. Then I'll play... Um, it might be better to kill his guy than to keep this level 2 Living Hive around. Because I need I need the, a space to breathe for my Blizzard Shaman. So we'll just replace it. And this uh, will kill his Steel skill Spark Tinkerer next turn. I want to level this Shatterbolt. I think Shatterbolt's becoming more and more relevant as the game goes on, because I will need direct damage to kill him. Also, playing level 3s over and over is good for your board, but bad for your uh, draws, because I, I won't have too many... Okay, so that makes a B. I don't know why I did that. that, that those cards don't attack. That's fine, though. It's a 21 toughness creature. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna shatter if the bee spawns in front of this giant, I'm just gonna shatter bolt it. Uh, and get in for five poison, which is gonna be super good because he has no way to kill me that I've seen. And then I'll play Grove Matriarch in an open lane. Yeah, so okay, there, so he has to block the uh, the bee for sure. Uh, Shimmerfang Serpent's live now because it's it's killed its blocker. I've got a dendrify to deal any level three creature that actually has a threat attached to it. It looks like he drafted walls, but forgot to draft cards to wake up the walls. I feel like if he had anything that did that, he would have played it by now. Especially the like six or seven turns I let the center classes live. <laughs> I guess it hasn't been that long. It's only been like four turns. 
Okay, there's Chaos Twister. Kills my bee, doesn't kill anything else. Shurfing Serpent still has 7 poison attached to it, so it's hard to block. I mean, he can block it, but whatever. Yeah, there's the instigator. We finally found one. And he wakes up, what, Steel Spark Tinkerer? <laughs> to deal 7 to me? That doesn't, that doesn't feel nearly as good as waking up at 24 27. Uh, so what do I play here? I guess I play Blizzard Shaman and hope that the uh, this this guy doesn't move. He probably will. Uh, but even if he does, he still gets value. Unless he moves specifically there. <laughs> okay, so let's kill this guy. And then I'll move him back with my Ronti Elementalist. Because Ronti Elementalist isn't doing too much else there. And it's a 7-6, which is bigger than the uh, the prospective 5-8. Okay, Umbric Ice Crusher's got a 12, it's 12 power with Breakthrough, which is solid. Not that good, because he's got a, a lot of Steel Spark Tinkerers. But all I need to do is stall out the game. Since he's got 5 poison on him, that's 10 damage every every turn cycle. There's another Giant. I think that's the card that's going to kill me, uh, Volcano Giant. Mm, not too worried about Cinder Colossus. So that does 3 damage. I think I'm just going to play the Grove Matriarch to block, because I don't need to be aggressive. Not really. All I need to do is prevent myself from dying. So if he wants to play an Instigator to wake this creature up and let me crack back for 24, uh, I welcome that. Flame Instigator only has 2 power, 2, two health rather. And he hasn't played any, he hasn't level, he hasn't drawn a level 2 version yet. He can't have. So it's going to be more useful to me to play this card and threaten just lethal than for him to wake up a creature and then hit me for 24. So I got to, okay, so he has a sap. I'll just throw something in front of this. Spark Brand is here? Okay. So I'm hitting him for 14 with this Grove Matriarch. Uh, I can play more Grove Matriarchs. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Play Grove Matriarch here, and play a Grove Matriarch here. And I'll play a dog in front of this guy. Get him for 1, so that's 15 damage. Puts him at uh, 21. So if I do 1 more damage to him, he dies to poison in 4 turns. 1 turn, 2 turn, 3 turn, 4 turn. I die, he die on my following turn. Not the, not the next turn I get, whenever I play this Living Hive. But the turn after that, he dies. If I do one damage to him, if I do more than one damage to him, he's dead. Well, I guess plus he has a shatter bolt. I have a shatter bolt in my hand, so I could just do nine to him, and he's he's dead to that as well. So this shrinks the power of uh, Grovmatriarch. Grovmatriarch. Yeah, this this one that's attacking him. Uh, this still attacks for five. It's a so there's one damage, so he dies in three turns. Uh, there's no way for him to stop that. Uh, he's actually just dead on my turn, because I can Shatterbolt him, and he, and he loses. Sweet. So, that's 5-1. Uh,